name is Lin Yuan, and my co-host is Edward Thomas. Welcome back, everyone, to Figure for Life, our podcast. And today, today, only today, only today, <laughs> we have another real life story. Yes, it's time for Fika for Life real life stories. If you hear someone in the background going, <laughs> <laughs> that's Lynn, how big. <laughs> that's so big. Wow. I was going to say, Lynn has her newborn son <laughs> with us. He hangs out with us now because he's like, he's like our biggest fan. Yeah. None of the other kids hanged out with us, but but I really. No, I don't think us. so. Yeah, no, he's like. Because <laughs> like, I'm re- irresponsible now. I, so. I, <laughs> you're so much better, mom. Now the other two are like, I just let him crawl down the stairs somewhere. We'll we'll pick him up at the bottom of the stairs while we're making the podcast. So. He's gonna get down at some point. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> and we want to thank our sponsor today, which is a, a Duplo. If you've Chocolate. never if you've never had these things, it's nice. I mean, it's really, really. Good. It's like so addictive. I can <laughs> stick one in my vein right now, and I'd be happy like all day long. So it's much better than drugs. It's true. Uh, and so it's we recommend legal. it, and it's legal exactly <laughs> in all countries. You know, unless. The country is like a dictator that hates chocolate. I wonder if any of the dictators hate chocolate. No. We should probably do a PhD on something like that. <laughs> <laughs> on, what are the preferences of dictators? No. Why would dictators hate chocolate? And then what does that say about the existential, uh, the existential uh, consequence of the soul of humanity? Oh, wow. I know. That sounds really like PhD stuff, you know. <laughs> I don't think we find anyone who wants to do that. And we, sure. we'll find no one who will fund this oh, yes, it would. so-called psycho <laughs> research. <laughs> yes, psycho research. That, mm-hmm. ah, we call it that, too. <laughs> okay. okay. What are we talking so, about today, Lynn? The real life story is, <laughs> yes. I have a friend. You, Lynn it's has a, real, a friend. It's a real friend. It's not yes. Ed. No. And that friend. <laughs> oh, I'm your fake friend. <laughs> My Bye. fake friend. I get and paid friend, your friend. Um, <laughs> she is a preschool teacher, so she worked in a preschool. And that preschool... Uh, apparently had other other people also, and there was well, an American good. woman. Yes, and my are we saying too much? Saying she's an American? Well, I I don't even know who, what, uh-huh. how. I okay, don't know. okay, we'll just say and uh, from a, a random a country woman, called the United a woman, States. Uh, uh, of uh, another. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, that person was racist too. My friend said because my uh-huh. friend is also uh, wait the American woman was a racist. Yeah. Was, oh, well, my I mean, friend was not Swedish as well. Okay. So they were working together and they had they had not so good personal chemistry anyway. Mm. Uh, and my friend, she said that it was really weird with that colleague because their colleague would al- always have this one boy who was already six years old. So he was about wow. to go to preschool class. He's like almost class, ready to be a man. Class, I mean, he can yeah. start shaving so. Uh. No. But apparently she would carry that six-year-old boy around mm. Under her shirt and a See. blanket on top of that shirt. Mm-hmm. That's really weird. And then she was thinking, that's really strange. Like, what is this kid doing exactly. under that blanket? And Can apparently after some issues, this colleague quit. And then the first thing that boy did when, she, when that boy came to my friend mm. was to jump on her lap and grab her boobs and squeeze them. And that's really weird wow. for a six-year-old to do. I'm obviously, like, what? obviously he's being has been he's been trained by someone, he, or he yeah. he thinks that that is normal well, or I like mean, appropriate, of course, because which is not <laughs> because the other teacher says touch my boob because this I is how know. you this is what little boys do, you know? And, uh, no, no, I know, no, 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 really no, 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 no. Yeah, um, it's quite strange. I don't know how I would how I would react if some little boy tried to touch my boob. I, I think I would be like. <laughs> I'd be like, back for me. Back off. Little touch, perv. touch somewhere else. <laughs> exactly. No, so the problem is yeah. more that. So my colleague, she pointed out this weird behavior to mm. the, the, the leadership yeah. in their preschool, and they were like ignoring it or just like making excuses. And then at some wow. point, that colleague quit. I don't know yeah. if if the leadership talked to that no. colleague or the colleague just like like the the colleague that. Let them touch the boob. Yeah, quit. Okay. yeah, or or did some weird thing. We'll call her. Kid. We'll call her booby. Booby, yeah. yeah. So booby quit. <laughs> booby quit. Um, but then my I don't know my friend. She was like, she was still didn't. She still didn't felt like that the situation was resolved. Mm-hmm. 
somehow so she still went to the leadership and told them yeah. like you know I didn't see you guys take any actions when I told you about this issue and you haven't right. taken any steps further yet and uh, I'm thinking about making a report to social services yeah that's like the normal thing that a responsible adult would do and then the leadership told her that this was her last day and that she was fired but that's really weird, though, because it you would sounds expect not like Swedish <laughs> yeah, like you would be able to say, "Hey, okay, you got like a month or three months or something like that." Like you can't just well, she had like proof and standing. What's that? Uh-huh. English? so she had like yeah, it's called proof and standing in <laughs> English too. And I, I think it's called the oh, it's like I, a testing period. Yeah, it's like when you first get hired and you don't have a permanent contract. It's yet. called a I can't remember what it's called in English. And the time between. Wow. What they can, when they can fire you, when when you when you stop working, mm. it's usually shorter during that time than right. during your permanent contract. Right, you don't so, get the three months no. like you normally. Do, so she so. said she would only get one month additional pay. Wow! And she was fired on the spot. It means that she didn't even get to like come back and and but and, that okay that, and, and, and yeah, the whole and that thing. should be something that she could actually. Have, Gone she went to, to like, the, the union. union. Yeah. She, she did went to the union. She yeah. said that she just wanted to make sure that she got paid. Right. And I'm like, well, that's a weird place. Yeah, because the union should have been brought in for negotiations. Yeah, before be that. To, yeah, to yeah. be able to say. Because it's kind of weird that you would just fire someone because they said they're going to report something. Well, they, obviously, threatened, yeah. they threatened to report something. Yeah. So it was really strange. But then the wow. question is, yeah. um, she got advice from another colleague, I guess. I think it was another crutch. And, and that other colleague said like, I don't remember if that colleague, uh, yeah, responded to the situation right. or the p- colleague just said, you know, let me give you advice. When you're doing this testing period, just keep a low profile. Like <gasps> that colleague was Whoa. more like, you know, you're not really in a position to act up or something like that. You don't even have a permanent contract. So, wow. so you know, so you, you shouldn't make waves. Look the other way. Yeah, don't make waves, you know. During wow. that time, and then my colleague, or then my friend, she was like, but how can I, this is like kids, it's not like some yeah. trivial thing. Exactly. Someone could just destroy this kid's life, because they were acting well, weirdly. I mean, he would definitely, kids. he's just looking to get beat up at some point in his life. <laughs> going to, oh, now I'm like in uh, seventh grade, and I go to some girl and touch her boob, and she just beat me up, punched me in my eye. And the question is like, do the parents know? Is that like a thing the parents are aware of? Probably or? not. I mean, how would, you, like, how would you tell the parents, oh, you know, here at our preschool, we, <laughs> we, <laughs> we, train, little, we train little boys to climb up women's dresses and touch the boob uh, because <laughs> we feel that that helps them to get in contact with their feminine side. Uh, or just like, this is an appropriate oh. way to find comfort and safety? No. No. No, no. You have to. It's not. You as an adult or as a caregiver and as a parent. As a, as a normal human being. You're, you're responsible to teach them like a appropriate way to yeah. find to find comfort we, we and so. safety <laughs> hey give me a hug okay hey here you go give me a, a, a piece of candy i mean like i had wow that's i had crazy. someone i know and her son was also she was still not really breastfeeding but yeah. almost breastfeeding her five-year-old and okay, i was wait. how do you almost breastfeed a what do you do like you you take the boob out and you're like, here you go. Ah, oh, nah, just kidding. Put it back in. <laughs> no, 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 no. But more like, so I ask her, so why is he doing that? Have you asked him? Because he's five, so you can talk to him. Yeah. And then she was like, well, he says that he needs it for comfort and he wants to be close to mom. I'm like, you got to teach that boy some wait, other wait, 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 wait. Uh, some other so method. Like, he's, like, mm. he's like, you know, I just want to be close to mom. And, you know, I just just can't get over the breast milk Ew. i just need more just and he's just Ew. like i mean come on I, in I, our society but the thing is it's not the breast milk thing it's it's like just to being close and i don't oh, know the sucking thing wait uh. so he's he's i mean okay. but he's sucking on that titty okay i was gonna that's <laughs> what i want to know i want to know where what kind of contact is he having because like i mean if you have a five-year-old he just wants to put his head on there and rub his no, face no 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 that's very okay different. but I think once you're once you're putting it in your mouth and mm. you're five years old, yeah, that's too much. I mean, there are societies in the world where where you know they breastfeed until they're like five or six or seven or whatever. Really? Yeah, I think like, two is they're like, like tribal two, things or whatever. People oh, okay. out there somewhere in like bush, 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 <laughs> and, and I'm like, well, there's nothing else out here to kill, so yeah, hey, here, take some mama, uh, you know. But <laughs> but like in the Western world, 
we just we don't have a need for it to breastfeed that long. No. And so it's really like I'm always disturbed when I see a five year old. You know, we had How a often do you see that? Well, when I go out to a restaurant to eat, there's always some five year old. Really? No. That's what? <laughs> like, what? Some of the always five year old says, "No, no, no! I've got my own. Dis- I have my own appetizer. <laughs> like, Just reach us in." I'm like, "What do you want to drink?" <laughs> oh, I I brought my my thermos. <laughs> I brought my thermos. She's sitting there. <laughs> I like your fresh <laughs> off the breast. <laughs> Like, I'm sorry for you people who uh, like those might might, might do oh that, but it's just socially not no, thinking, really accepted. I'm thinking like all the really conservative people who listen to us, but it's, but it's not like, about a conservative thing, ex- though. You know what? I can't believe they're talking about sucking a breast <laughs> on the radio. I mean, just like what is wrong with these people? They're, they can't be Christian. They're gonna burn in hell. Really? They're gonna <laughs> burn. Okay, but. Yeah. Question the so the, dilemma, question? the dilemma the is dilemma. what would you have done? Like one oh. is to duck and just don't no, make waves. No, 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 no. Or the other one is just my... like, well, take one for the team. I'm such a boat rocker that you can call me Rocky Five. You know? <laughs> like I don't even mean to rock the boat. The boat just as soon as I sit in it, it just rocks. You're like, because like, oh, you're black. That's what I know. <laughs> you're like, it is. Oh, that black man uh, among all those white people. He's like. He's just gonna rock the boat. Why <laughs> do we? Why do we hire him? He's just gonna rock the boat. You know, he can't just sit in the boat and not rock the boat. What's yeah. wrong with that? Uh, no, but I, I think that. I mean, first, when I first saw that, I'm like, "Excuse me, what are you doing?" Because you know, I can't shut up anyway. So yeah, I, and the way you would say it, and I would, but like, that American lady, so I would have been like, "Excuse me, um, do you normally walk around with a?" Kid under your shirt like that? Yeah, and why? And then I'm like, so you're not letting him like suck your breast, are you? <laughs> like, who's is this for him or for you? Let's just let. I just want to know. I'm not trying to criticize you. You know, I want to be a fellow worker here. Really, but I just think like this is a little perverted. Uh, what you're well, doing? Uh, so. There th- was there was a trigger word. Perverted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I probably wouldn't have lasted that long either. No. Like one week. <laughs> they're no. Like, they're like ah. Uh, we're going to let you go um, because you uh, rocked the boat way too hard. You just walked in and the boat was shaking. Uh, we just can't have you here. Wow. You know? now, I, and I would have, like, even after getting fired, I still would have called social services. Yeah. And then I would have called the newspaper. <laughs> and then I would have called. <laughs> you made, you oh, would make such oh, oh a my, problem. Wait. I'd be outside with my sign. <laughs> Fired for protecting the rights of children from some perverted titty lady, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'd call it. And then like CNN would call it. Say, CNN. <laughs> Boobgate. <laughs> Boobgate. Yeah. Instead of Sweden yeah. Gate, it's Boobgate. Exactly. And so, and then I'd write a book. My experiences with Boobgate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then you can finance yourself through that. Exactly. Like I'd be on like all kinds of talk shows. It's like so. We understand that you are an advocate for children. Yes, I am. Someone's got to stand up against all the boob gates in this world. <laughs> the, wow. the, the The United Nations has just appointed me to the commission. Boobgate ambassador. <laughs> exactly. I'm out there. I'm making sure there's another a boob. There will be no more boob gates again. No. Oh wow. But yeah, but you... I would I would have definitely done. I mean, but that's how I am. I, I feel like I have a lot of you know moral. Well, civil cor- courage. You know, just like civil disobedience. Like if something is wrong. You you point out and you try to correct it, even if it costs you your job. Well, she definitely costs her her job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if that had been my wife, I'd be like, "What? I can't get my new car. I can't get my Mustang, woman. You better go back and get that job." No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Yeah, what's wrong? We with need you? money. Stop need having money. morals. No, no. But I think it's I think it's really bad that. Like yeah, the other colleague like, told her to well, just shut up. No, but I think it's really bad that when she goes to the to the leadership, that the leadership didn't at least try to investigate it and say, okay, hey, let's look into it. Yeah, I mean, if someone came to the church and say, hey, Ed, you know what? I I've been noticing that in the in the pews while you're leading worship, sometimes, yeah, I see like like one of the one of the members in the board, they have the six year old kid up their <laughs> shirt. I wouldn't go. Well, you know, that's just your perspective. <laughs> we actually know what she's doing. Exactly. There. We <laughs> listen. We're leaders. We're in charge. Just go back, peon. No, I would. I would like. Excuse me. Okay, I'm gonna. Look, I just like call the person to my office just and say, um, you know, I've noticed that you have this blanket with you, <laughs> and every week there's a different kid sitting next to you, and they they disappear. They disappear. Okay. I'd like to know 
Like, are you practicing to be a magician or something? Because I've heard <laughs> that you're letting them suck your breast. Oh, wow. And the you word, of, come, and the word of God out. says, thou shalt not let the baby touch the booby. <laughs> really? <laughs> which, okay. which, which, which gospel verse, is that? Which, hey, which gospel of Edward? <laughs> sometimes the word just comes like that. No, but I, 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 w- I would have taken it seriously. Sorry, baby. And I would have, I would have confronted the other person. Yeah. Um, I would have talked to the person who made the complaint and said, okay, can you tell me like when you've seen this and stuff like that so we have some documentation? And then I would a- actually go to the person and talk to them. Because I think that, especially in this day and age, when we see so many cases of like abuse or close to abuse and stuff like that, I feel like it's really important that the adult world um, just takes these allegations seriously and looks into them. They may not be anything, but at least you've looked into it and you've shown some responsibility. And I feel like the leadership of that place showed no responsibility. And then the coward employee <laughs> giving coward advice should be ignored. Should be ignored. Yeah. That's the, that's the kind of person who says, well, you know, I mean, slavery is wrong, but I mean... Do we have to protest? It brought it brought us so much good, also. (laughs) It's like I mean, we are getting some food. You know, I mean, we're getting scraps off the table. You know, it's better than nothing. You know. Wow. And and I think that people like that who who obviously money is more important than morals. Yeah. Like I would, and I would lose respect for that person anyway, and I would just like never listen to them. No. Because their moral compass is not yours. No. The same. No, no. My compass. I mean, it's like it works. (laughs) <laughs> Mine is not broken. <laughs> but I mean, there there was this other issue in Stockholm where um, the kids there was there was a, a man who actually abused some kids in the preschool, Ugh. and then they, they they had to close down and just investigate and so on. And wow, I mean, those parents. I I don't understand if the school still was running them because all the parents they must have lost so much trust and faith. I mean. I guess it depends on it depends on like how high in the leadership the person is, mm-hmm. and it depends. Well, I on think if it school, wasn't just a normal preschool a normal, teacher. Okay, and then kind of, and then it depends on if the school knew I, about it. <laughs> yeah, like if they if someone had reported it, and then if they actually did anything about it. And I think sometimes we have to. I think like, in this case, things, it came from the kids. Okay, because things kids don't go things away around. on their own. Things go no. away because you actually chase them away. Yeah. Um, so and I think that's one of those. But I think that that. Like where we're at now with morality and everything, where people are growing up thinking like, there's no right or wrong. What's right for you is right for you. What's right for me? Like all of a sudden we're losing the ability to actually say something is wrong. Something is right. Yeah. Something is black. Something is white. Let's see how the way that rhymed, you know, because I'm like so fly. Oh, you so fly. I'm so fly. <laughs> but, I, but I think that's that. And I think that this is an example of how, the moral compass of the world has shifted so that so that people are like unwilling to confront truth or lack of truth or things or people cannot actually see what's wrong. It's mm. really scary. I have another, um, or not another example, but uh, my, you know, our friend Tim and me mm. we wanted to sit down one Friday just to have a relaxed time. Yeah. Went to watch a movie and he was like, oh, I know this movie. Let's watch this. <laughs> it destroyed our Friday night. So it was a movie about was a this. Disturbed film. We just wanted to have like a light movie where you can uh-huh. laugh and just you know, not use like, your brain. He's not going to do that. And then this movie was about this one poor man. He worked at the preschool. Yeah. And then there was one little girl who fell in love with him, with the preschool teacher. Like, I mean, that happens. Four or like, five year olds. Uh-huh. Really? Yeah. They they just like want. Four want attention. Never fall in love with me. They hate me. <laughs> okay. And then, <laughs> and then that kid made up a story. The kid made up no. something that this preschool teacher did something to her or stuff like yeah. that. And then he got so badly mm. chased, and yeah. he had to go to, and it, like, and then suddenly all other kids also had some story with this preschool teacher, but they were not true. Wow. They were not true. And then wow. that man's life got so destroyed. Mm. So that's the whole thing. Like I can understand. And and I, uh, like this is a hard thing to talk about because it's like, it's like how, like how can we separate truth from fiction? Especially when they come from kids. Yeah. Which, like, 
Like we know kids have like a really big fantasy, mm-hmm. but we also know that kids also tell the truth about things that they've been exposed to when they when they have to. Yeah, exactly. Oh, really? I know. We can give you a microphone soon. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> one day, one day he's gonna take over, Lynn. You know, just I'll when, like, when I'm in pension and you're dead. <laughs> wow, you really think it's gonna go that way, huh? <laughs> Let me tell you, Lynn. You want to live forever? I, you will be dead. And I will be senile. That's how it's going to go. <laughs> I won't know that you're going to be like, okay, it's time for Fink for Life. They're like, what is he talking about? Where's Lynn? And I'm like, so Lynn. And he's like, uh, she not okay, here. he's at it again. <laughs> Shut up, Lynn is alive. I see her right now in front of me. You know? But I think like in, in the case of my friend, I yeah. think maybe there would have been a better way to, to do it. I mean, what I, do you think? Because I don't, know, I don't know how she did it. Like how she talked to her leadership. Right. Maybe she was too abrasive. Maybe she was too threatening instead of like giving an opportunity to like, hey, you guys can still turn this around. Instead she, of I mean, just like, I'm going to go and report how you guys. Long after. So I'm going to eat one of these things because. Uh, They're so good. <laughs> mm, mm. Uh, but how long. Like. How long after she had reported the first time to them? I don't know. I don't know the time. That would be really interesting. If it was like the next day, (laughs) maybe she was a little too much. But if it had gone like a couple of weeks, the other person had quit already too. Yeah, the other person quit. And then she said like, there was no warning that she would be fired. There there was not like that they said, well, let us consider that or let us think about Mm. it or or whatever. It was just like from... Maybe it was a Friday or something. Like, yeah, this today was your last day. Well, that just seems weird that, that <laughs> even if she said that she would report it to social services, like, why not just say, hey, listen, we have a policy and we're following these rules and this is how we do it. You know, you don't have to go that, that far or whatever. I yeah. mean, like, engage or something. Not just like, oh, you're one of those. You're going to tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> we can't have you here. She's a troublemaker. And it's kind of interesting because if her other colleagues said, "Oh, you don't have, you're not permanently employed, so you shouldn't rock the, rock the boat," does that mean that she was aware of this problem also, but chose not to say anything, and therefore becomes a co-conspirator? Because mm, she was just quiet, and then, mm. I mean, I think for my friends, just was mostly about that kid, like mm. how who was standing up for that kid's rights and right. protection, like. Who will do that? I mean, could could she have gone to the parents instead? Mm. Would that have been a better road? I don't know. Well, it's kind of hard because that's something that the leadership should do. Yeah. So, but I remember once I was in a similar situation with uh, with someone um, that I was I was working with did something really inappropriate. And when I went to the leadership and talked about it, they just laughed. At you? Yeah, they're like, ah. Uh-huh. Well, that person's always doing weird things like that. Ah. And it they didn't like, take you serious. No, and I was like really angry. And I remember like when I quit working there, I brought that up. And I said, you know, I lost respect for all of you people because here was something I felt was really a big problem. And you guys did nothing. You weren't you didn't you weren't even take willing, me serious. You weren't willing yeah. to listen. You just joked about the person. And I'm like, first, that's just disgusting. And second, I don't I wouldn't want to work with you people again anyway. So I was like, oh. <laughs> You're like, I'm cutting all the ties <laughs> now. Because when I rock the boat, I rock it hard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's kind of interesting, though, because I think that um, I think at some point we have to decide like what's important, and I think children are important, and I think that kids are starting to be treated like accessories more and more. You know, and so I'm afraid that that children's that the value of children as also human beings. Is being eroded. So human beings. Yes. <laughs> Not as then, like pets or. <laughs> yeah, you know, we have like moving to the stage of things. You know? <laughs> things you you get. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I think about like so, and this is like a totally different thing. But so I've noticed like in the last few years, like when we have uh, baptisms for mm-hmm. infants, people are so upset that the babies cry. I'm like, but babies cry. Why are they upset? Because, because it destroys the whole. Occasion. Yeah, because they think the baby should be sitting there and it's like, oh. So strange, man! It's pouring water on my head, mumbling something about Jesus, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Uh, ah! Obviously, especially if the kid doesn't like water. 
Exactly. Which, that only tells me family's nasty. But anyway, <laughs> it's like, don't you bathe your child? It's like, I don't really like any water on me. I was like, okay, whatever. Uh, <laughs> and I think that, um, that I don't know, it, it kind of bothers me that people are like. But how do they get upset? They're like, no. Oh. They're just like, oh, I can't. But like, you just see, like, they're just distraught. You see it in their face. They're like, Psh. You know, because Nobody obviously did. if you're taking the selfie or the picture or whatever, <laughs> you want this picture of this baby who's looking all happy. Uh, uh, I mean, it's like people want weird music that has nothing to do with baptism. I'm just like, what? That's like what you would have at a wedding, you know. It's just okay. the occasion. Yeah. I'm like, well. You remember when but we had anyway. the, um, a blessing for Adele? We don't, we don't bless babies. <laughs> we thank God for babies. We thank God for yes. babies. And Itai was just running around. Like, I know. And he was just, he, was he just, couldn't sit still. He was just, he was like, just, I don't know. But he was just being a little kid. Yeah, I'm like, he's a kid. What, what are you well, expecting? I, didn't care. <laughs> I mean, he could have come up and just said, like, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I was around, blah, 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 just pack. You know, it's like, okay. Um, kids being kids, somebody, it's only the problem is when adults do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like, no. <laughs> People are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he's preaching again. And they just get up and start walking around the church, you know, <laughs> playing with toys, bricks and everything. And it's like, oh, could you please not do that? <laughs> so I hope everyone maybe have a thought experiment. What would you, what would you have done? Like, exactly. honestly. And maybe yeah. you can discuss this with some friends or send us some message. What yeah. would you have done in this tell situation? Us. Write to us and tell us what you would have done. Mm. And hopefully... You would have done the right thing. And you already know what that is because I already told you what it is. <laughs> you know what we were expecting of you. Exactly. And if you're not like that, oh, just wait. We'll get you on the air. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for listening. To another episode of Seek Out for Life. Thank you for listening. If you have any comments or ideas, please send us a message to fikaforlife at mail.com. Fika, F-I-K-A. This was the Fika for Life podcast with Lin Nguyen and Edward Thomas, and we hope to hear you again.